Hello, this is the To Health With That, naturally healthy in no time podcast for big health topics taken in small bites. I'm your host, naturopathic doctor, Amy Nuzo. This is season one, all about the MTHFR mutation. This week, let's talk about MTHFR testing and results. What does it actually mean? Not everyone who suspects they might have a mutation needs to test. And for some people with health-related anxiety especially, testing might actually increase that anxiety without giving you any tangible benefit. You can boost your nutritional status and your methylated folate without testing and essentially act as though you have an MTHFR mutation, know you're doing everything possible to mitigate the symptoms and risks, but not really know your genes. In some circumstances, your doctor will order testing, but it's usually done outside of your insured healthcare providers. So the bottom line here is, when is it worth it? Typically, doctors don't test for this because technically there isn't an approved treatment, which is inconvenient. There are a few exceptions to that rule. One is situations involving abnormal clotting without documented causal diagnoses, although the American College of Medical Genetics is now discouraging this. Another is fertility situations involving repeat miscarriages, late-term miscarriages, stillbirths, or neural tube defects. Also, occasionally related to some treatments because MTHFR can cause differences in the way people react to certain pharmaceuticals. Notably, the most commonly used drug for rheumatoid arthritis, which is methotrexate, and also the chemotherapeutic agent Folfox, which is a combination of two different drugs, fluorouracil and oxaliplatin. Lastly, in some cases of high homocysteine levels, especially when there's a family history of early heart disease. Some doctors will also order testing if you request it, but many won't because typically it's outside of their scope of practice or they would have a hard time justifying it to insurance. MTHFR testing can be very expensive and supplementation for MTHFR issues really isn't. So when is it worth it? Well, I think it's worth it for fertility. If you're trying to get pregnant and you and or your partner have either multiple personal or family history factors that are suspicious for MTHFR, you've had fertility difficulty in the past, or you've had a previous baby with a neural tube defect or some combination of those factors, then it might actually help to know your baselines and know really what you're dealing with. Also, if you have treatment-resistant anxiety or depression, you've tried everything your doctor has given you and haven't seen good results especially if there's similar anxiety or depression in genetically related family members. And the last but my favorite reason is for geekery, because you geek out on information and you just like to know. That's the category I fall into. So there's a couple of different ways that you can test for MTHFR for yourself at home. By far my favorite is through 23andMe. It's the best for general geekery, This test tests your genetics as a whole, and also has ancestry information, health reports, and heaps of random but interesting information, like how likely you are to get bitten by mosquitoes relative to the people around you, and what percentage of your DNA came from Neanderthals, because who doesn't want to know that? The cost as of today is $199, US and 117 of that can be paid by an FSA or HSA if you're in the US. The test doesn't give MTHFR results directly, so you have to download your data and run it through a processor. There's bunches of those, um, but the one I like best is from Genetic Genie. It's their methylation panel, and they do ask for a small donation. Another way to test, if you just want your C677T and A1298C, is from MTHFR Doctors, uh, and that's mthfrdoctors.com, and it's $129 U.S., Um, You can also add a related gene called COMT for an additional cost. Again, use your best judgment if you're exploring testing. For some people, like myself, who thrive on information, testing is terrific. For others, it just adds to the anxiety burden. Remember, you can address these issues without knowing for sure whether or not you need them. Okay, so you've tested and you got your results. Now you've got to read them. And reading them isn't always easy. First, if you opt for the 23andMe and then do Genetic Genie, then you get this really kind of overwhelming report of a whole bunch of different uh, gene SNPs, MTHFR C677T and MTHFR A1298C are the two that we're looking at here. There is an additional MTHFR listed. It's MTHFR 03 
P39P. Um, but it's not one that I discuss very often because it hasn't really shown up too much in the research as being a significant cause for any sort of disease or symptoms. And there's not a lot of correlations with health issues. So the thing I love about Genetic Genie is they use stoplight type coding to give you a quick idea of what's going on. So remember, for each gene, you have two copies, one from mom, one from dad. Results are reported in a positive or negative, plus or minus, backslash, positive or negative, plus or minus format. So here's the code. Counter to expectations, negative, or the minus symbol, is good. Positive means positive for a polymorphism. Negative slash negative, and on Genetic Genie that's coded green, means no bad copies. Positive negative, coded yellow, one bad copy. Positive positive means two bad copies. As with a stoplight, red means the pathway is blocked, yellow means it's compromised, and green means all is good. Bear in mind, nobody's MTHFR is fully blocked. It's always levels of compromise, but obviously with two bad copies, the level of compromise is going to be much higher than with one bad copy. The other thing that can happen is if your doctor does the test and gives you the results in words, because the words can be a little bit confusing too. So hetero, the root for the word hetero, means different. So heterozygous means two different copies, one good, one bad. Homozygous means, the root word means the same. So that means two bad copies because nobody ever reports two good ones, right? Wild type means you have the typical versions of this gene, meaning no bad copies. Compound heterozygous means you have one bad copy and one good copy of two different genes. So again, there's a lot of really weird verbiage here. So now, when you get your results, you'll know what all of those infuriating little plus and minus symbols mean. Also, you'll notice that the methylation panel shown above does test that third polymorphism again, I don't discuss it at length because so far the research doesn't really show any significant compromise. If that changes, I'll be sure to let you know. And just for fun, a genetic fact entirely unrelated to MTHFR. According to a fascinating article on kqed.org, the DNA packed into your body could stretch to the sun and back 61 times. That's a lot of DNA. Each cell has approximately six feet of DNA spooled up inside of it, which is actually really remarkable when you consider how small cells are. And each human has, conservatively, 10 trillion cells. If you do the math, that means 60 trillion feet, or roughly 10 billion miles of DNA, inside each and every person. The sun is 93 million miles from Earth, so your DNA could stretch there and back roughly 61 times. If that's not remarkable, I don't know what is. Next week, we'll talk about why methylation is so important anyway, with a good look at what a methyl group looks like and what your body does with it. This will start to give you an idea about why working with MTHFR isn't quite just as simple as taking a methyl forward. Thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to talking to you next week. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. 